Are you using the Fusion page in Resolve to make custom animations? Why not? Don't just grab my free presets and call it a day. You can, but you shouldn't. As I've said multiple times, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about making free presets is that you can then open them up in the Fusion page and see exactly how I created them and then take those ideas and tools and techniques into something completely original. But today I wanna to talk about something specific and that is my secret to animation that looks amazing. I'm not talking about design or style or anything like that. I am talking about movement. This is a tip I picked up in a internship years ago and I've been using it ever since. And while we're talking about it, we're gonna to touch on some really valuable core techniques for anyone animating in the Fusion page. So let's get started here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. Several hours have passed, don't worry about it. We're here on this standard 10 timeline and I've dragged on a blank Fusion composition. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna make sure I'm over that or it's selected and I'm gonna click this button to open the Fusion page. And to demonstrate, I am very quickly going to create a background node, bring up the green, we can pull that up on a preview. And then I am also going to create an ellipse mask on that. So we have a nice green circle. And I'm just gonna pull down this width and height as well. Great. And I'll connect that to my media out. Now for anyone that has done any basic keyframing, you might be aware of linear and Bezier keyframes. If I create a transform node coming out of this background, make sure I'm previewing that, and I just move this ball over from this side of the screen, go to the beginning of my timeline, check center, come forward and move that to the right. When I play back that movement, the movement will be at a steady pace and it will move and when it hits that last keyframe, it will stop. And I already have this spline window open down here. If you don't have that, you can click this button to open spline. Um, and another important setting here is on these three dots, you have show only selected tool. I'm gonna uncheck this for now since we only have this one tool. And if I'm clicking around, I wanna make sure I always see what's going on here. But that show only selected tool option is super valuable sometimes when you need it. So if I check that transform, I'm also gonna click this button to zoom to fit. And here you'll see that movement we just keyframed visually shown in this spline viewer. This spline viewer is super similar to the motion and speed graphs in After Effects. That's what I came from, that's what I was familiar with. And this technique that I used to make this animation look way better is something I learned working in After Effects. But again, the tools can be a little different, but it's the principles that we're really working with. And if you've done any animating in After Effects or another Adobe product, you might be familiar with Easy Ease. And there is something sort of similar to that in Resolve. I'm gonna select both of these keyframes and just click F. And what that is doing is that is flattening this curve. So at the point of each keyframe, it continues the flat line and then eases up to that final point where it flattens out again. Alternatively, if I undo that, I could click S as well. And if you only have two keyframes, this looks exactly the same. The differences between using F and S for this sort of easing motion really come into play when you have more than two keyframes in one sequence. F will make sure all of those are perfectly flat at each point, but S will actually smooth in between those so the entire motion feels a little smooth. Now, if we just watch this back, you'll see that the ball won't be moving as fast at the beginning, but then it goes and then slows down towards the end. It feels a little better. Again, back at the beginning, it goes across, cool. Now to make this feel a little better, I'm even gonna bring in this second keyframe a little bit so it's a little quicker, but you have a sense of that motion as well. However, this is the default easing amount. I believe this about tracks perfectly with the easy ease settings you might see in After Effects. I believe that has an influence of about 30. And if we actually click in our timeline viewer and press T, all of a sudden up here, you will see ease in and ease out. And if you select those two keyframes, you see that the ease on those has been set to 33. Now, here is my secret. We're going to increase these ease values, but we're gonna increase them to a specific amount. We're gonna change one to 50 and one to 70. And which one is which really comes down to how you want the motion to play out. Personally, I find out that if you want more emphasis on the beginning or ending of a move, set that easing parameter to 70 and complement that with 50 on the other side. Let me show you. Again, this is the standard 33, just a little bit of smoothing. I'm going to change that. I'm gonna pull up 
ease in to right around 70 and ease out to 50. Now what you'll see when we play this back, again, we increase the 50 from 30 as well, so it'll take a little longer to get up to speed, then it will have a little bit more of a whip since this is taking effect over the same amount of time, but it will take a much longer time to slow down at the end. Watch this. You don't have to make your own sound effects. I'm pretty sure I always do. <laughs> Again. And you can sort of feel that it takes longer at the beginning, but it takes longer at the end than it does at the beginning. Awesome. And just to demonstrate, I could reverse those. I could bring the ease in down to about 50 and the ease out, crank that up to around 70. Now it takes much longer. There is more emphasis on the front end of that move. I use this on almost everything I animate. And again, this is still just a starting point. It's a really good baseline for consistent smooth motion. But the value of the spline tool is that you can do anything with this move. You can increase these ease and durations, but also you have these handles down here and you can change the direction of these. Now again, try to remember that this is a visual representation of this move. So when this was smooth, it was taking longer to get going. So if we pull this up, so that it is coming right up, and then we change this ease in back to around 70. Try to think about what this is going to do. It is going to be not moving at all. As soon as it hits the keyframe, it is going to take off and then have a nice long slow down towards the end again. Um, and we will actually move this a little ways out so we can see that it's still, and then it kicks off. Now this feels weird when it's on screen, but if we come back to that first keyframe and take that off of screen, then it whips on screen and then comes to a slow, nice and good there. And hey, we can hop over to this settings tab over here, check on motion blur, pull this up a little bit, so that this comes in with a nice little motion blur and comes to a rest, looks really good. This is currently one thing I go back and forth on the most. If I have animation starting from off screen, sometimes I still give it a little bit of ease so that it has really sells that um, whip as soon as it's on screen. But more often than not, I just have it start at full speed and only give it ease when it's somewhere on frame. So then if I wanted this to hold for a little bit, I could come back to controls, set a keyframe. If I want this to move back off that same side, come a little later, changes all the way back. Now we're gonna set up the same thing again. I'm gonna select both of these keyframes, flatten out automatically. I'm gonna connect this first one. We're changing that ease out to about 70 and this ease in, I'm gonna change this direction. Uh, you can also select this and come down to this button down here to change to linear. So now if we just play this back, it whips on screen, comes to a nice slow close and then slowly picks back up speed to come off screen. That is my tip, that is my hack, that is my cheat code for really good motion. Especially when you have motion um, originating and ending on screen, change that ease amount to 50 and 70, depending on which end of the move you want more emphasis. I have a whole lot more to talk about the spline viewer. Really, the spline viewer is where you make animation look good. You set keyframes, but then you have to work with those keyframes. There are so many different ways you can tell those keyframes to work. I would love to go a little bit more in depth in the spline viewer of how to create some specific motion. Trey, if you're interested, leave a comment about that and it might uh, bump it up the priority list a bit. Thanks, I'll see you next time.